Well, Tom Gray, also known as Tommy Toad, he ran the dispatch department and he actually at one time ran the entire ad services department. When I started in November of 81, he was on a two week vacation and everybody was very fearful for his return because Tom could be a little ornery and what Tom didn't know is while he was gone, he had been replaced as the, um, as the uh, supervisor of ad services. And he didn't know that and everybody else in the department did know it. And he came back and it was bad um, and Tom was grumpy, but I've got to say that Tom is perhaps in the top three or four most interesting people I've ever known. He, uh, he worked at the news, uh, as he would tell you, he was the class of uh, 55 from the old Ann Arbor High, last graduating class up on the corner of State and uh, Huron. And he came to work at the news, I think in 1958. And he was definitely old school. He knew the all, all the old union printers and uh, he was good friends with a lot of them. And uh, everything he did was old school, but he spoke almost in a different language. Um, he needed an interpreter, which I became his interpreter in later years. He would process advertising for the salespeople. And a lot of the new salespeople especially did not understand anything Tom was saying. Um, he would say things like, he would storm over to a new person's desk and say, this is wrong, it's all wrong, you need to program in. It should have been in this, and you need a today, and it needs a rush, and you need to program in. And then he would walk away, and the new rep would say, uh, what did he just say? And I would say, um, I think he wants you to put that in a today envelope. And that was his entire message, he just wasn't very good at conveying it. So yeah, another thing he would do is he, he was never, um, he was never clear on his communication. Everything was a game. If he wanted something from you, he would come to you and everything was a charade. If he wanted corrections on a JC Penny ad, he would say, okay, Jim, I am thinking of, and he might hold up a penny. Um, he may try to make a J with his finger, but no, nothing was ever just linear with Tom Gray. Everything was all over the map and he really did need an interpreter. Tom used to, uh, he had a lot of eccentric, ex, eccentricities. He was always worried people would drink his coffee when he left the room, so he would spit in his coffee before he went, and he'd make sure everybody knew about it. He made a big production of it. If you put any kind of loose change down anywhere in the department, he would do, and he'd stuff it in his pocket. It was just a game he played, and so it became a game that we played. We'd drop loose coin loudly and watch him come over and snatch up the coins. And uh, one day, Bing Sunday came up with the idea of super heating a penny. He took a paper clip, he held it with the penny with the paper clip. He took a lighter and <laughs> made the penny extremely hot and then walked by and said, oops, I've dropped my money. Tom rose to the bait and walked over and looked around shiftily, reached down to grab it and the screech was high pitched to say the very least. The sprint to the bathroom was extremely fast to cool down his fingers. And uh, I don't think he ever played that game again. Tom Gray stories, you could go on literally for years. He was a legend at this place. I think probably one of my favorite Tom Gray stories was in addition to scooping up other people's coins and going through all of the, the vending machines, always looking for spare change. He would also go into other departments and <laughs> if they had cookies or candy available, he would take some of it, then <laughs> he would go into another department and gift it to somebody else, <laughs> pretending that he, he had purchased it and he was giving it to them, not sure that he had swiped it from another, another department. So on Valentine's one year, there was a reporter in the newsroom who Tom was rather smitten with. She was probably 30 years younger than he was, blonde, and uh, he went over to a bowl and scooped up a bunch of those candy hearts that have little messages on them, like, I heart you, I love you, you're special, you're sweet. And he walked across the newsroom <laughs> and he put them on her desk while she was on the phone. <laughs> what he didn't know was we had a handful that we had scraped the messages off and changed the messages. <laughs> they said things like, oh, I don't even know what on this video that I want to repeat what they said, but they were rather vulgar, um, involved eating excrement and uh, a lot of lewd acts. And we asked him when he came back across the newsroom, 
did you give those uh, candies to her? And he said, yeah. I said, where did you get them from? He said, that bowl over there. And Dave Bicknell and I said, that bowl over there? He said, yeah, that bowl over there. And we said, well, this is what's in that bowl over there. And he looked down at what was in our hand with all these vulgar messages on them. His face went white. And that man sprinted and dodged and weaved through all the desks in editorial over to her desk. She was still on the phone. He hit her desk like a cyclone, scooping all of the candy up, shoving it in his pocket. Her eyes were as big as saucers, still on the phone. What the hell? He offered no explanation, shoved the candy in his pockets and stormed back out of the newsroom. And that was the last time I think that he uh, borrowed from other departments to give gifts to yet other departments. Uh, that's one of my all-time favorite Tom Gray stories.